All right, guys, welcome back to the lab. This is part seven of my Honda S2000 AP2 transmission rebuild. Part seven, we're gonna be talking about the main shaft clearance adjustment. So we'll be working on this big dog right here. So this area right here is the clutch housing. This is the transmission housing, and we're gonna be taking out some screws here to access it. There are 14 bolts. Here are seven of them. Here are the other seven. So I'm gonna take these guys apart. I'm gonna do it in a crisscross pattern. The reason why we do it in a crisscross pattern is so that way we don't tweak anything out and it, everything stays straight. So I'm just removing all these a little bit. Now I'm going to take them all off completely. Okay, so these are all M8 1.2 by 1.25, and again, it uses 40 millimeters for the short ones and 50 millimeters for the long ones. For there, right here, two differences between the two: 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter. Now, take this. Whoops, one more right there. Let's take the transmission housing again. Use two hands. Take the thing straight up because of the pins, and you don't want to damage anything. Uh, there is an oil plate down at the bottom, which is metallic. You still don't want to bend it. Go them straight up. There it goes. Okay, let's put this thing aside for a second. We'll be working with the transmission housing. Within the transmission housing are the shims. We're gonna use these retaining ring pliers. These are made by Channel Lock to get those guys out. And just remember to wear safety goggles just in case, or safety glasses, just in case the spring comes flying off of these things. All I gotta do is stick these two little tips into the little holes. This is what a spring or a shim looks like. Looks like this. Just put these guys into here. Give it a little squeeze and then you can pull it out. So let's pull ours out. And again, just stick the retaining ring pliers in there. Stick them in the holes, squeeze a little bit, let the thing out, and there's one of them. In the manual, it calls out for two of these guys, but I actually have three in here and I don't think it really matters because it's, all it's doing is adjusting the height or this thickness of this total assembly, so that way it meets the requirement. So these really don't do anything except act as a spacer. So here's my second one, and here is a third one. Again, put the retaining ring pliers into the holes, give it a little squeeze, and pop the thing out. Watch out, because they may come flying off of here and they could hit you in the face, so again, wear safety glasses. Here is an oil plate. If you don't put this section on here, the transmission housing, onto the clutch housing straight and concentric, you're going to end up bending this guy right here. So just be careful when you put that down in there. So now to put this thing all back together, we're going to do a reverse order. I'm going to put the oil plate guide right in here. And then I'm going to take my shims, which should be pre-lubricated with MTF already. 
And I like to th the, stick the thin shims in first, so that way most of the load is taken up by the thicker shims. So I'm going to put this thin one in here. Again, stick the two little guys into the holes into the shim, and we're going to squeeze it, drop it in there, and then I'm going to take my snap ring pliers and I'm going to push this thing all the way around so that way it sits nice and flush against the bottom of this hole. That's nice and flush. Grab the next one. Again, snap ring pliers go in, give it a little squeeze. Whoops, a little slip there. Give it a little squeeze. And then I'm going to drop it in. But I'm going to put this opening not on top of that one. So I'm going to offset it just a little bit. So this one's pointing over in this direction. This one I'm going to point in that direction right there. Not 180 degrees off, but pretty close. Give it a little push, get down nice and flat. And then put this guy, snap ring plier in the two holes. Give it a little squeeze. And I'm going to rotate that opening away from both of those. And then I'm going to give it a little shove. Make sure she's sitting flush. So that's how you put the shims in there. Now, putting this thing back on, let's move this over. Looks about right, right there. Now I'm going to make sure my pins line up, and we're going to put this guy on. Two hands, take a look at the pins, get it to align properly, and there we go. Now you're going to drop in those 14 bolts again, and you're going to put the long one right in here. And you're going to put the other long one right in here. And then you're going to put all these other small guys all the way around. You don't have to put the brackets on right now. But I typically put the brackets on, but you don't have to. We're just going to do another check real quick. And here's that other one. So take all of these bolts down, snug them down by hand, follow the manual, and torque them three different times. Follow the pattern on the manual, and first start out with 10 foot-pounds, then go up to 15 foot-pounds, and then go up to 20 foot-pounds. And then you could check the distance one more time again, the thrust clearance one more time, and just make sure everything's okay. So when it's time to check the main shaft thrust clearance, you need to flip the whole assembly over. So now you should have the transmission housing here to here on the bottom, and then the clutch housing sitting on the top. And on the top right here, you can actually see the main shaft sticking out. Here's the factory tool. The factory tool is this little two blocks right here, and it has a little lip. And the little lip is on the inside. It's actually right, right there. It's a little tiny lip. And that actually grabs the bottom of the spline section. I'll show you how that goes on in a second. And there's also a little block, and I'll show you what, the, what they intend the block to do. To put the tool on, you first put this block in. Drop that block in. And then you're going to open up this tool. And you're going to slide it on here. And then it's got a catch on the bottom of it. Squeeze it together, catch it on the bottom of the spline, and then tighten this guy up. I'd snug it down by hand first. Now, take five millimeter Allen key and just give it a little snug. Doesn't have to be super tight. You just want to make sure it's up against the bottom of the spline. So this bolt right here is actually supposed to screw all the way down. And then once you put your dial indicator on top of this shaft right here, as you 
raise this thing up, tighten the screw down, the indicator will move up. But the problem with it is this little block down here, it's not very stable. So that's why I don't use the block. All I do, uh, I grab this guy with an indicator on it and I just pick up with it. And you can actually hear it moving. And that movement is the thrust clearance. So to check the main shaft thrust clearance, I just grab my two hands, stick them underneath this upper section right here, and I'm just going to pull this section up, and you can see the deviation right here in the indicator. Here we go. I'm going to pull this thing up, and you can see how much thrust clearance there is. It looks like it's right around 8, just below 8 right there. So. That is definitely within tolerance. If it's not within tolerance, then you have to change the shims. Just a review of my setup real quick. There is a dial indicator on here. It just grabs onto a tab right here on the side. It's right by, there's a serial number right here. That's which tab that I use. And then it just um, goes to the top of the main shaft right there. So that way it could read it when it moves up and down. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. A to J, out.